how to forget things, you know? And, you know, anybody here notice I was a biker? <laughs> I've been trying to keep it a secret, you know? And I love being a biker. And of course, I went upstairs to get you good folks a poem, and the poem I wanted to get, I couldn't find. Figures, right? So what I'll do is I'll read the poem, and we don't want to press the button so we lose everything. I'll read the poem because I'm very grateful and very excited about this project because, you know, whenever you work on a project with a committee, you can't always trust it, right? Anybody ever have that experience? Mm -hmm. You know, they say a giraffe is a pony designed by a committee. You know what I mean? And fortunately, this project went really well, but I want to read the poem about it. You know, you can raise your hand if you identify. From the boardroom of the mind to the boardwalk of the wares, so many steps between, a thought becomes a concept, a concept becomes an idea, an idea becomes a plan, a plan becomes a project, a project becomes a goal, a goal becomes an accomplishment, so many steps in between. But very few thoughts ever become accomplishments alone. Two discuss the thought. Three discuss the idea. Four idea the plan. Five plan the project. Six start the project. Seven debate the goal. Eight argue the project again. Nine almost lose the goal. <laughs> Ten build the project. Eleven finish the goal. Twelve step back and admire the accomplishment. And think the thought of that became the concept, that, the, that became the idea, that grew to the plan, that became the project, that worked its way towards a goal, that led to the accomplishment from the boardroom of the mind to the boardwalk of the where so many steps between. For no journey is ever finished without every step, every footfall in between along the way to fruition. Now, as you can see, how many people here love the wares? Come on, everybody raise their hand. You're okay, so we kind of got the good friend to do it. And I love the wares. I've been, I've been coming to Bike Week. I haven't missed one since 1980. So it's, you know, it's very dear to my heart. Four or five years ago, I came to Bike Week, and I haven't left yet. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it kind of grows me. You'd be amazed how many people I meet in this town that have the same story. Oh yeah, I came to Bike Week. I haven't left yet. When? 1952 is the record. You know what I mean? Like, Kristen knows the Kristen knows the guy. And so, as you can see, welcome to the wares. Now, it's ah. Uh, that's one of my books up here, if you'd like to buy one. I marked them 12 when I'm in a weird mood, so you could have it for 10, okay? <laughs> but I won't pay you to take it. I mean, that's the best thing. <laughs> and there's another book of mine, which I don't have any with, but I'm just showing the picture, because that's about the road from Boston to the Wares, and all the little steps in between there. Now, that isn't the Wares. That's Salisbury Beach. And that's when I, I always like to look at the cars because usually if they got rag tops, you know, they're pre-1916. They're trying to redo Salisbury Beach and bring it back. And some of my friends and I are trying to do the same thing, bring back the joy and the beauty to the wares. Now, again, that's on the road from Boston to here. That's down in Nashua. And the main thing about that is, you figure every biker that ever came up Route 3 crossed that bridge to get here. And this is another one that's very dear to my heart. Now, you can't believe what it says. This one always lies. Now, some say it's St. Mary's College, some say it's in St. Mary's School, some say it's in Manchester, some say it's in Hooksett, some say it's in Concord. Every time you buy a co uh, postcard, they tell you it's someplace else. <laughs> Now there's me standing beside one of the signs, and that's probably, one, that one is Laconia Motorcycle Week, we'll talk about it a little bit further, but you can't quite see it there. That is colorized. We paid like $600 extra so that you good folks could enjoy it in color. And, and the, I know the colors from the old days and stuff, it's 99% dead on in the colors. There, there's another one, the Mount Washington. Now, 
the thing is beautiful about it is see the top part of it? That was an idea the committee came up with. Then the bottom part was mine. And originally, where did the idea for the signs came from? They were talking about putting flower pots 10 feet up on the poles down there. And I, then how are we going to water them? I said, no. Wow. Why don't we put like a silhouette originally was the idea because I was working on a book called Where's the Icons. I said, and I, I said, decided to give it to them. I said, instead of putting flower pots, why don't we put a you know, silhouette of the train, the boat, and a, and a little thing down the bottom that says what they are, each one of them is. And of course, one thing led to another. And then that's what we ended up with. I mean, really, that's where a committee actually did a better job than the original plan. And down the bottom, you'll see, that caused us a lot of problem. Down the bottom, it says the Where's Action Committee, and then it says whoever submitted it. This one, myself and uh, MC Kennedy submitted it to the Where's. And yeah, see the top of it? I mean, what a great idea, huh? I mean, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna tell them again, thank you. There's a, there it is again. Uh, now that one, that one is Warren Hughes. How many people here know Warren Hughes? He is the gentleman who puts the then and was uh, time piece in there. Yeah. And I was so glad when, this, when the Wears, Laconia Citizen, went down, you know, folded, they picked up Warren Hughes because he is just this wealth of information. And you know, and I got, I, they wanted me to submit all these myself. But I thought about it. What a great deal. It could be a lot more fun if a whole lot of us submitted these instead of just you know one person. So we got all these different names. That that's Warren Hughes. And I love the trolley going over the bridge and then the boat underneath the bridge. Now, yes, that's what it looks like. The original postcard from like. I would say 1910, because see the car in the background? It doesn't have a roof. They didn't know they were supposed to put roofs on cars, I guess, to like 1920, and they caught on with that. There's the trolley, one of the original Laconia trolleys. And yeah, there we are at the Veterans Center, and Patrick Tyranny of the Laconia, was the Laconia Historic Museum and the Library, he, he broke that up, used the picture, and I think it'll show you here. Oh, look at that. Is that beautiful, that picture going through there? And see the statue. That statue they put up, like in the 1890s, it was there till like 1931. And of all things, because it's really low to the ground, you got all those high buildings around it, it was struck by lightning. And somebody just recently found the heads of the statue up in Vermont. Now, I don't know how he got there without the rest of them, but he got there. And if you notice in the picture, you'll see a bike over there on the right. You'll see another bike there on the left. I, again, I would venture to say this is pre-1916. This is before Laconia Motorcycle Week. And there's the statue with the head on it and the drinking trough down below it. Now, there's the train. The train probably did more to like help build the wares than anything else. Because there used to be four trains here a day from Boston. Imagine that, four express trains from Boston. And you can see the tracks there and the thing there. Yeah. That, this is a very interesting, I haven't got a clue that says Boston and Maine. I kind of like that picture. And if you look over it, it says 1911, so it was probably on the tracks during you know, the first bike week in 1916. And it was redone, the photo was redone by a gentleman named Edward DeVito out of Torrington, Connecticut. He's passed away since he did, you know, he touched that up. I called up his wife and like we talked about you know giving her a few bucks for using the picture, but she didn't want to deal with like by um, computer 
and I don't do much by right long hand. So we still owe a few bucks if you people want to help me send it to them. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it so they don't get sued. Unless you're a good lawyer, we might not even need the money. And yeah, now this is one of my favorite ones. The first air show that happened here was going to be in 1910, I believe, by Harry Atwater. And he started flying up here from Boston, and he got fogged in and tilted, so he had to land. Now, the, the air show came up here originally, and very dear to my heart, it came, it was originally a Harvard University air show, and that's where they got the idea of bring him up. Well, he didn't make it in 1911, he made it up here. He spent about three weeks putting on air shows, and then I don't know wherever he went. But down the bottom, I know you probably can't see it, it says that it is submitted by Nick Tamposi. Nick Tamposi, I didn't know. See, this is that thing that you have. Anybody else here do research? Well, it, you're lucky. But anyways, <laughs> like, you, you know, sometimes you just go on, in, you know, intuition, you know, like, and I asked Nick Tamposi to submit that because he likes airplanes. There's a beautiful picture of that. I love that picture. And now that's Nick Tamposi on the phone getting stuff done. That's what he does. He gets on the phone and gets stuff done. But the absolute great thing about him, I didn't know when I asked him. Well, I never know what I'm doing anyway. This guy didn't get lost in the elevator. Probably doesn't know a lot anyways. But here it is. Now that on the right is his father. He was like 71. He was, you know, passing away at the time, and I think that's his uncle Jim, Nick Campos's uncle, and I think this one is, is I, I want to say it's Nicholas, his uncle Nicholas, but it might be his un uncle Jim, because they all kind of look alike, and even Nick kind of looks like him. But I didn't know, I found them listed to some professor, like in Minnesota, had written a paper on the Tamposi brothers of National New Hampshire as avi a commercial aviation pioneers in New England. But I didn't know when I asked Nick to do that, that he had that solid connection. I just thought he might be cool to ask. And you know what? He was very cool. We are very lucky to have people like that submit stuff for us. Uh, there he is again, getting stuff done on the phone. He's probably on the phone somewhere right now as I'm doing this. There we are, Nick and I. We're standing on the shot one, in case you didn't notice. And we're standing underneath, this is at the Southern New Hampshire like air, airfield at the, at the Nicholas Camposi Aviation Center. That's not Nick. I'm on the phone. That's Nick, the uncle. Now, like I said, they were considered aviation pioneers. And I think that's pretty good luck. You know, just saying, hey, we'd like you to do this. And finding out, it's like asking Pablo Ocaso, hey, would you give me a little drawer? You didn't know who he was. I thought he was some old guy sitting in the park. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, here we are again on the shot one, as I say. I also got a beard and long hair in that, too. <laughs> yeah, they were back at the sign. Now, I think the next one, nope, ah, there it is. That is Robert Ames. Does anybody know who Robert Ames is? He owns the Half Moon Arcade and the, and the motel, and his family, you know, they're very, his father came here from, I think, Maine, Old Orchard, Maine, and they've really done a lot here. And that building, that's the Lake View, I believe, no, it's, it's hard to get all the lakes, you know, you got lakeside motels, lakeside swimming pools, you know what I mean? I don't get it. But that, he, they own that building behind there. And that's going to be on the next thing of signs. And he is brilliant. He also, he, you know, because I can't spell with three, you know, cat with three T's, and if you get into cats, you plural, then I've got to figure out how many Z's go on that, you know what I mean? And he's very brilliant. It's really good. They wouldn't let us do what we wanted to do was put down that he is also the webmaster of where'sbeach.com. 
And that is probably the definitive history website that you can find everything that ever happened, all kinds of great pitches. And there he is there, kind enough to help us put out this project. Uh, there's the hotel. How many people are aware of that hotel here? That hotel had almost 200 rooms at least. It had, you know, it had like indoor plumbing when, you know, when people did. It, it was incredible. Telephones, electric lights, people waiting on you. And the horrible menu you ever read in your life. Like pickles, everything was pickled in those days. And probably after people sitting in there. But this, this has got the most interesting story because that's the new Where's Hotel. And the older they got, the more they proclaimed the new. The first, I think it's the one in the middle. That was originally, they brought it over from Diamond Island. In the middle of the winter, they dragged it over with ox. And then they kept adding to it. And then they kept on proclaiming it was more. You know what I mean? And, it, and it burnt down in 1924. I think it was like November 27th. 1924, and there was arson, they say. Somebody set the music hall across the street on fire. It was a windy night, and it took out a lot of the wares, which also took out another building that most people don't even talk about, which was Morgan's Photography. Because you could go down to the wares in those years, and you could go up, and you could rent a camera you know, Kodak, and it would already come with a film in it, and you go down along, you take all your pictures and shoot them, then you take it back to Morgan, and he would develop the film and mail it to you. So can you imagine the tre treasure trough of, I mean, photos there, all lost during that fire. You know what I mean? It's absolute tragedy. Yeah, there it is there, and there are some, and I found them, of all things, if you want to find out anything about New Hampshire, Laconia, or the where, don't look up any place in New Hampshire. They never got the information. Now, I think this came out of um, the AAA book, you know, in 1922. I can't, there's no cars in it, so I can't tell. Is but that, is that the small building, the photo place? Which one? The small building in the corner. That's an interesting story. Because that small building, and there's another one exactly like it on the other side. They call that, I think, they called it a luncheonette. And then the one on the other side, for the people from New York, they called it a delicatessen. Oh. And, and sometimes they said it was a general store. And you know, it seems like every year they change whatever they thought it was. It was something different. And if you look, the rooms, does this have the price on it for the rooms, this one? Okay, this one. Okay, this is part of why the motorcyclists came to the Wares in June of 1916. It says four dollars in the 1916. That was for a lot of guys. That was almost a week's pay. You know what I mean? Like it was a big deal. Between June 15th and like the day before the Fourth of July, it was only two dollars a night. And you're not going to find that anywhere around here. I found that in a New York, I think it was Brooklyn, New York. It might have been the Eagle. And that's where I found that at. But if you do research, if you see something, save it right away. Don't, don't say, oh, I'll save it later, or I'll get back to it. Because I think there's dust bunnies inside the computer. <laughs> they eat stuff you want to save. You know what I mean? It, it does, honestly. And, but that, that's where that came from. They had an orchestra, but there was also a music hall right next door, you know, where uh, Tower Hill Tavern is, right behind there now, where that is. I think down below is like a shooting gallery, you know, and look, I mean with guns, you know what I mean? It wasn't like today. But down, you know, they had like arcades, bowling. It was an incredible place to be, and the music, Now, this, now see again, we got cars with no roofs. You know what I mean? The hotel, and again, I, I don't see the delicate testament in this one, 
But look at the walk up there and the shrubbery. And the shrubbery keeps changing in every picture you see, too. And I think this was like in 1915. I think they weren't beyond painting the shrubbery in. You know, this little tree would look better there. And they just painted it in there, you know what I mean? You know, today we Photoshop things. Well, I want to go back. See, that's why they put that kind of button there so I can do that. <laughs> now, this, like I call it the veranda. Imagine coming out in the morning and the four trains are pulling up there. You know what I mean? At night, you can stand up there and you can listen to the music from the ballroom, watch the moon coming up. I mean, because that's the direction the moon comes in. And the boat come in, whatever it makes. I think I was a trailer truck. <laughs> but I get confused real easy. But again, imagine that and, and look at, but like I said, I'm not always too sure. I mean, it says a copyright by somebody, but I don't think they're in town today. And, <laughs> but like I said, I, I think don't think they were beyond painting stuff in those. And it was a great time. Anybody here collect postcards? Yeah, I mean, they're great. I mean, especially in those years, because there, were, there was no television yet. And radio hadn't really started. Films were like the old-fashioned flicker, flicker white, black and whites, silent. And vaudeville was big. I like to think about vaudeville. In fact, Laconia, I'm doing research on downtown Laconia, and we're just finding out there was like three vaudeville houses around the turn of the century downtown Laconia. There, this is beautiful. That one is the delicatessen. The other one, I think, was the, was the restaurant. And the, it's, it's a beautiful picture. It's absolutely beautiful. A lot of this stuff is out there, and I've actually bought some. You know, the, anybody ever heard of Cow Card? Cow Card Town? They, they sell stuff like that. And, you know, they send you prints, and I just tell them, yeah, here's some money. Don't bother sending me like you know prints because I'll, I'll just use them. I don't even mind when I put stuff in my books if I put their watermark in it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, we're all in this together, kind of. Yeah, there I am back at the signs. With, now that one is the lakeside, the that blue one behind it. it. That's what they call the marketplace now. Anybody knew that? Mm -hmm. Know that? Mm -hmm. And everybody knows more than me. I should hang out with you guys, right? Yeah. There we are again. Now there's that picture that's been colorized. Does anybody here know Jennifer Anderson? She's the deputy director of Laconia Motorcycle Week. Well, how many people know that she's got a doctorate? She's also a professor. And she, you know, when I, I was, I wouldn't have stepped in front of Charlie, to be honest, especially if like six two or something. I wouldn't have stepped in front of him. And we said, he said, no, no, let Jennifer put it. And I, this is one of the great things about putting people's names here, because I was like down at the wares, and I was talking to these two, you know, I think they're young people, they're in their 30s couple, and I was telling them about Jennifer is actually a teacher. She teaches at the college, and they were so impressed because they said they were from like somewhere down south, Manchester or something, and they said they were teachers too. So I mean. It's nice when you you know you bring people into something that they can identify and have some part of and feel like they're actually doing it. Yeah, you know, there's me. That's Charlie. There, as I said, he's a little taller than me. Of course, somebody said everybody's taller than you, Padlock. No, the only guy I knew that could wear boxer shorts to keep their ankles warm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but there I am with Charlie and there's Jennifer. And there's this, you know, beautiful loving cup they gave me for the research I did, Laconia Motorcycle Week. And there's a funny story about that cup. I was homeless at the time when I got that cup because I was living down the wares. And if you live in the wares in the winter and you're paying 200 bucks a week for a room, guess what happens in the spring? Out the door you go. You know what I mean? Like, I can't afford twelve hundred dollars a week for a room, and so I'm dragging this cup around. I'm at the hostel downtown, and I'm dragging this cup around. And I'm sure it might get stolen, and you know, our 
Oh God, Matris. The wonderful lady, Matris. Hope. Hmm? Hope. Do you know her name? Hope, H-O-P-E, is the mother. That's the mother, Peter the daughter, Cynthia. Cynthia. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Cynthia Matris was so proud. She said, my father had won that cup because they had that one for him. My father had won that cup. I said, you know what? Why am I dragging this around? I gave to her and she kept it in, you know, in the lobby at the Naswa for a year until they had to take it back and put somebody else's name on it. You know what I mean? And so that's what they did. But I'll tell you the truth. Receiving that award was one of the proudest moments of my life. And you know what I got to me that was even more important than the award? I got the picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? You think about that. I don't got to worry about if anybody steals the picture because I got a bunch of copies. And, oh, and this is a story how one thought spawns another. And this is strange because this is how I, I got the Fritzy Bear Award. I found it was always here. There's, if you go look at it from the history of 1916 Laconia Motorcycle Week, there's only 23 words out there. And most of them are of and then and that. You know what I mean? There's not a lot out there. And so, I, you know, I found it in the, you know, 1917. I found about the hill climb, who won the hill climb, what they rode up the hill climb, the time they spent the hill climb, up, going up the hill, and where they were originally from. And so they won the award. But I wanted to put these banners, one on, on the Tower Hill, big banners, and one on the other side on Ames' arcade, you know, proclaiming, because I got good pictures, I don't have them with me, proclaiming the 100th anniversary, it was 1917, of the hill climb, the first hill climb that we have a record of. Charlie said, don't do that, don't do that. Don't tell Charlie I said this, right? He said, don't do this, don't do this. You're muddy the waters, people are getting confused because we're celebrating the you know, 100th celebration in 2023. So I didn't do it because, you, know, you know, I'm a team player. The next year, he comes out with a reenactment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's a showman. He had a one-up me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we had it again this year. And hopefully, well, I'm, and I'd love to see, you know, I might as well take a, anybody mind if I take a side trip here? I got the microphone, you don't. You'd have to yell real loud to win. I, but anyway, so I would like to see in 2023, an enactment where people act, some people actually ride some old bikes or at least have the old bikes, you know, proclaimed on the tank and, and flyers, you know, come in. You know what I mean? It would be so cool. And anybody here was here at Laconia Motorcycle Week during the 80s, late 70s and 80s? Then you was another one. That ice cream man, he's checking the Ice cream man from hell. Right, the ice cream man, <laughs> man from hell. And, and there was a couple no, old gentlemen. That no, I, I like to get some actors to dress up like them. Mm -hmm. 23. You know, just to proclaim Character. what a wonderful yeah. history, Laconia motorcycle. You can tell this is part of the, you know, the lecture. I really get excited about. And the, I would love to see people, in, you know, interact that. And, you know, the gentleman in the tutu, he used to wear this whose lace, and, you know, like black, and it was really wild. You know, I don't think, because this is our history. You know what I mean? Am I the only one that was there? You were there. I am always so grateful. I'm going to call the plea here. I am always so grateful when there's somebody that knows something, you know, like about what I'm talking about in the audience. Because when I fall on my face, it can pick me up. Thank you, brother. You know what I mean? And ah, oh, that was the picture. The same week, Laconia Motorcycle 1916 happened. That was the cover. That's not Laconia, but that was the cover of the Motorcycle Illustrated. I forget if it was June 16th or 17th. That and that is the cover. Look at look at the. Some people say it's a little. You know, it isn't bikerish enough, but look at how vibrant the colors are. It could be, right? You can feel the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. That could be the wares. It's just so cool. Oh, and a lot of people think, 
Oh, they showed up. The bikers showed up. The motorcyclists showed up. That didn't happen. They've been coming for you for years. This is the Worcester Motorcycle Club 24-hour endurance run. That was in June of 1913. And guess where they went? That's from the wares. In 1913, now my friends think it was a boatyard because of the building. Now, if you look real close in the right-hand window, there, you can see there's a Moxie sign. So it was some kind of, at least they were trying to sell Moxie, if not motorcycles or boats. But you can see that was the crew out of Worcester, and they stopped off here. But this is one of the things. This gives a little hint. This is one of the things. This is 24-hour endurance run. And their idea of fun was leaping on their bike on Friday night, running through the pocket brush in the middle of the night, you know, dodging squirrels and chipmunks and raccoons, and nobody was around. They beat themselves and the bikes into the ground. So uh, Jeff Campbell was the person who brought us up here first in 1916. He got the idea from Lacey Carollis, who was in the Harley Davidson advertising department. Did I do something? No, you do it. Here you go. Okay, thank you. But anyway, so they, he got the idea of what are we running through the pocket brush in the middle of the night for? Let's go for a ride, go somewhere, and have some fun. That's why they end up the wares. You had arcades, you had music, you had like boat rides. They, they believe they were on the boat rides the first time up here. Now that's Kennan's that was down probably just about where the Tower Hill Tavern is today. Now this, this, this is another thing about research. You can find this picture maybe a half dozen different places and everybody says it was a different time. I think Warren Hughes says it's like 1924 or something. Uh, Bruce Hield, did anybody ever hear of Bruce Hield? He was the definitive area historian. And I, I talked to him a few times on the phone when I was writing my book, Laconia Motorcycle Week, 1916, and I came up here and to give him a copy of the book and he had passed away. And, you know, it's like, but I got to talk to him. I wish I had gotten to meet him. And he said it was like 1912 or 14. So that was pre like, the first Laconia Motorcycle Week. And if you look at the pictures, right there, it's hard to see. There's a couple bikes there. Across the street, there's another bike or two. And up to the corner, there's another bike. And there's not one hard top automobile in the picture. Also, see the trolleys? They were here too. So that was definitely pre-1925. Ah, that is the crew that came up here in 1916. They're somewhere in New York on their, I don't know, Albany run or something like that. You know, one of their endurance runs. That's a, that's a car that says like, you know, Firestone tires on it. Because they, everywhere they went, they had to bring a car full of tires to follow mm -hmm. them around. And it was interesting. Now, B.A. Swinson out of Rhode Island, he, they say he's the gentleman who brought motorcycles to Rhode Island. I think it was Goodyear offered to give him a car full of tires, and he wouldn't do it. He said, well, motorcycle. We don't carry things around behind us in cars. We bring sidecars, you know what I mean? And you'd always have sidecars full. But that's the way they believed in those days. Now that's the first crew that came up here in 1916 in April. That was their first one of the season. In fact, you can see a little, you know, smidgen of snow there. And that was in Boston in, uh, I think it was, Oh, I forget to all, get all the little places confused. But it was right downtown, Copley Square, I believe. It was one of those. And they, I think there was like 150 bikes. It wasn't big bike runs with 100, 100, 200 people in it. That wasn't that rare in those days. And you also noticed there was no information about the Laconia one. 
So I, it was underground because they were playing in the next year, they were playing in like we're playing in the big one up here. They were playing in the big one in 1917, so they didn't say much about what happened. There, whoops, no. There we are, there we're saying, whoops, we're saying goodbye to the wares evidently. There we are. That's the bridge. Now, I originally wanted the picture with the trolley going over it, but, you know, they decided to give me this one to run. And, you know, it's, I like it. Oh, and this is going to be, we're going to be doing a new batch of, of uh, you know, signs next year. That one, did anybody know about the tower? Yeah, I mean, you probably the tower, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was insane. That is a tower. It's 10 stories, some say 9, some say 10. On the bottom floor, there's a restroom. Mm -hmm. Then you've got rooms to stay in as you go up to like the sixes, and then it becomes observation. See the windows? Mm -hmm. Obser Would you want to sleep six or seven floors up of, from a restaurant <laughs> in a wooden structure? I don't think so. <laughs> I try never to sleep in my oven either, you know what I mean? Like, it, you can sleep, if it's your oven, you can sleep where you'd like. But, What's the date? We're gonna, Warren Hughes is going to put that one up, and Warren Hughes is going to write that one for us. And, Did that burn down? Or? Yeah, that burned down, and I think it was like 1890 or 1899. It was only there for like six, seven years. Is it those townhouses on now? Hmm? Those townhouses are there. Um, do you, anybody here know Bob Sarno, Porky? They call him. His house is right, right beside where it used to be, the Red House. Anybody would know where the Red House is on Tower Hill? I think it was right across the street from that. Now the next one we're also having. This one. This is in this row. That is going to be the stagecoach. And there's a gentleman, I think he's from somewhere up around Lebanon, the Stagecoach Association, Historic Association. And when I said I wanted to bring stagecoaches to, you know, the signs to the wares, everybody said, well, they didn't really have much to do. Because I think they got here in like 1840, and then the train came in right afterwards. But I found the folks that put out the trolley cars here, they originally put out stagecoaches and carriages. I don't have their name handy. And that's my friend. They have rented it. You can rent that stagecoach and put it on your lawn if you want to freak out your neighbors. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can rent that. And my friends did a bike one, you know, for charity. And, you know, that's where it is. I think that was an Ames bike, but I'm not sure. Oh, and that, I love this. I think it's Clifford Johnson that did that. Johnson Clifford. You know, like, I love that painting. You know, it shows, I can't you, you know, some of us with age, can't you just see kids out back with old cars or old trailer trucks jumping up and down on top of them? And all those kids having a grand old time. And I put a book out a few years ago called Hometown Ride about, and Hamilton, Massachusetts has the tank in, you know, in the Patton Park. I had a friend of mine draw a picture just like that, but the tank with all the kids jumping up and down on it and having a grand time. Now that is Jim Rubin's Boston Society Orchestra. Now I think, I don't think this one is in the original music hall on Tower Hill. This might have been in the early, it's this school here, but I think we got a picture. Yeah, that, and a, there's a picture later on too that I didn't get a copy of it that show that same building, that's in the, the original music hall on Tower Hill that burned down the fire of 1924 without the trees. So, and I don't think those trees grew in 20 years. I mean, they were, mm -hmm. they, they look, and, and they were, so it must have been two different pitches and I don't have a copy of it. I'll probably spend the rest of my life, they, it's in a building they wanted like $620,000 for, and I just don't got that money to buy the picture. You know what I mean? But being a madman, you know, like researcher, if I had it, I'd get it. We'd be over there now looking at it in the book. 
Oh, that's the inside of the ball. I don't know. See, again, I don't know if that is, uh, you know, the Irwins, or if that was the original one. The original one also showed movies, which would have been silent flicks. They would have been, you know, they probably had vaudeville, and there was something else they had besides music. That's there we are. Yeah, are coming out of the wares. And now the next research projects, hopefully, are going to be the bicycle. I love bicycles like that. The petty, they got nine different names for them. The high wheeler, the penny farthing, uh, philosophy. Does that sound right to anybody? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that, that is Thomas Stearns. Imagine, I think it was 1889, 1889, he rode around the world on that bicycle. And some of these shows, like he's got, you know, the bedroll type, the backbone of the bike. You, you can just kind of feel today's biker in there. And he's got a bedroll, though that's a pith helmet hanging off his arm. Mm -hmm. And that is his gear in front. Some show a rifle pitches, and, but he does have a gun. There's a guy named, I think his name was Frank Lenz, who tried to ride around the world in like 1893 on a bicycle, but it was a safety bicycle. And he carried a gun. And in 1903, George Wyman, who was the first gentleman to ever cross America, carried, he carried like, Lenz carried a camera. He was stern, carried a gun. And George Wyman carried a gun and a camera. He wasn't taking any chances because that's what happened. He lens pointed the camera at somebody in the Middle East. They got upset, and then next thing you know, he ended up disappeared dead. And, but there he is, there's Stern. Imagine that, kid. just think about it. On that bike, most people can't make it down the block on one of them, you know? And the, oh, there's a bunch of ladies. That was Laconia Motorcycle Bicycle Club from like the 1890s. And I can, can't you just kind of see them, you know, in your mind's eye, riding down into the wares, going down to like Kennan's to get ice cream. I mean, what a wonderful time and a wonderful place to live. Yeah, that bike, that, that, that bicycle was made in Beverly, Massachusetts. And it's called the Raven and W.W. W. Marshall built, built it. And I don't know if anybody remembers Al Marshall from, is that, Al Marshall was a gentleman who started the Marshall stores, the partner stores. And it's interesting, would anybody like to hear a story about him for two seconds? Al Marshall, and now when I was a kid, we were very poor, I'll call it play, and there was a truck with all these little milk bottles and stuff on it, and I wanted it so bad, it was about two weeks before Christmas, and it was marked 229, but I wasn't old enough to know it was marked 229, but my mother did. And she told me to ask the man, you know, how much it was, and it was less than two dollars, I could have it. Well, he heard her say that, so I asked her, how much is that? And he said, it's a dollar ninety-nine. I knew a dollar ninety-nine was less than two dollars. But can you imagine, he went on to like 98 stores. Can you man, ma imagine a gentleman like that doing that to me? I don't know if he just saw one too many kids come out of the store and bawl their eyes out. I like to think that was the answer. And how he got that, he, I remember it was only, it was really a tent. You know, it was a little bit pot wooden, and then the rest of it was a tent. And he used to sell fruit and vegetables. And later on, he went to sell, you know, like, like uh, salvage stuff, like building 19. And how he got into selling, then he went on to sell ice creams. He opened an ice cream stand. Because he had fruit and vegetables. He'd go every, every morning, like 4.30 in the morning, to Haymarket Square. He'd buy all the fruit and vegetables. And what's the first thing to go bad when you buy it? Bananas. And then he seen this thing, like, you could buy ice cream, and you could like quadruple your money as soon as you called it a banana split. 
<laughs> so he took all these, you know, give you a ton of bananas because they were no good anyways. The only thing you'd be good for, and and he went on, and uh, then some. He ended up with 98 stores afterwards. I think it was. I mean, a lot of wild things. Yeah, and now that's not a very good picture of it, but I love this. That is a hot air balloon coming out over the wares, and I think it was like 1895. Can you imagine what, like all the excitement, all the history, I mean, it's almost like if they invented it, they had to take it to the wares. That's the first thing the scientists said. We got the car, take it to the wares. You know what I mean? Look at this, an airplane, take it to the wares. You know, that's the, it, everything, because everybody knows you, right? Where's is the center of the universe, right? We all know that. Raise your hand if you know it. I think I'm the, oh, thank God I'm not the only one, right? But you, you know, because they, yeah, there it is rising. And all the people, and a lot of people thought it was a big deal because they shut down the street for like, like Timberfest this year, and I think Wake the Lake. And I get pictures of them shutting down the wares in 1911. You know, to have a party. Let's have a party. Shut the street down. We don't need it. You know what I mean? At the time, they didn't because they had the train. But in boats, and they had some mighty fine boats. That's probably, anybody know boats very well? Because, you know, I can make a date up. I don't care if you don't know. It's okay. I'm out of the game. But I hate it when I say, well, that's a, and they, somebody says, no, peddler. And they know, and I don't. You know what I mean? But I would venture to say that was like, right around 1920, because there was a lot of money from like 1920 to 1928. And if it was a 19 beyond, like 1933, it would probably have fins and stuff on it, because that was called the design era, because they had to do everything they could to get like people's sales. That's why the cars look so well from the 30s, everything. Because There's a boat like that still on the lake. Yeah, yeah, you know. It does tourist rides. Yeah. They, they have a, they have a bunch of boats in Merrill Fay. Anybody know him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Merrill Fay has some great effect. They got his son Jeff. He went out and did one of those holes out there, deep holes in, in the bay, and brought up a motor that had been down there for seventy five years and had it running within three days. And he did that with one that was 100 years old. Oh. I'm from Beverly, Massachusetts. You leave it like out, in, out behind your house with the air cleaner off, the engine's gone in three days. You know what I mean? Because the salt there it was ocean. Oh, yeah. oh. I'm gonna, hopefully I want to do like a sign someday either on private property or down the wares on cars when the cars came to the wares. Now, when I was putting together the first book this year, you know, I saw the Cannonball Baker. Does anybody remember Cannonball Baker? I saw the Cannonball Baker had stopped a number of times at Benson Chevrolet. They used to call it Franklin Garage at the time. And I thought that was incredible that somebody with that, that highest statue would be there. And they called up Corey Benson. And I said, Corey, you know, I found that, that Cannonball Baker had been hanging out at your shop probably with your great-grandfather. And he says, oh yeah, he says, we still got a 1916 Chevy in stock. <laughs> what? And I forget what it is. I think it's like a 495 because they call them for the price. They come up with a price and then they name it the price. And I said, of course, I said, I'll be right down. <laughs> I, and I was in Beverly, and I, you know, was so, you know, that was down in, uh, I want to say, Belmont, right, Tilton, Tilton probably, right by the diner, their annex, and I said, I'll be right down, and if you notice, I'm leaning against my bike in the showroom, mm -hmm. I slid my bike in the showroom, and got the salesman to take pictures of me in the, me in the car, and it's, I think it's got a 1916 plate on it. Oh, now that's again me and Nick Camposi. Now the reason I'm showing you this Facebook yard, we're putting out a TV show one of these days. We're already shot a couple called the Where's History Page. We shot one on Merrill Fay. We shot another one on Bob Lawton. 
We're doing it out we, the next one in the, you know, the first of June is Penny Patu, mm -hmm. and also uh, Jim Irwin, one of the Irwins who wanted to do a thing on the Irwins. But he's, you know, I was going to originally be the host. I've shot over 125 cable TV shows, but I'm a madman, you, you, as I'm showing you. And Nick got on the screen, you know, in front of the camera. <laughs> By the end of the show, he was the host. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so you, you know, a good trooper, you know, artist, you know, actor, whatever, you know when the best is and you step back. You give them the stage because, you know, it's not all about you, as they say. Now, this is the one that says, we get to this, it says, now you've heard about the science, I hope you venture down to see them. My, my books here are $12 a piece, but I'll give you them for 10 And in the pictures, the photos are only $4. They're good paper, you know? Mm -hmm. And I put them together today with different, like, history scenes. And I guess that's the only poem I'm gonna read you, because I wanted to read Lacomia Bound, which is one of my favorite ones. And maybe I'll read you one biker one. This has got a picture of my friend in there. She's 94 years old and still alive. <laughs> I mean, so if you're thinking about retiring, there might be hope. You know what I mean? Is there, are there any other bikers here? I, I know he's got something going on because he knows everything. <laughs> this is called Bikers is a Strange Breed. Bikers are a strange breed because when it comes to living, most folks act like they're going to live forever and feel short change when they don't. But most bikers know the truth. When it comes to life, we're all just passing through. So you might as well enjoy the ride. What others measure in dollars and cents, most bikers measure in speed and chrome, cast iron, stainless steel, black rubber, engine power, and it's what your gauges measure that counts, not other people's expectations. It's twisting the wick, it's snapping the next gear, it's going down the red line where you streak down the white line to leave the citizen to stay in line. Because you know the truth, when it comes to life, we're all just passing through, and heaven is just one more gear. Up. <laughs> <laughs>